Hello and welcome back and today I want to talk about the QNAP TS653D but really I'm talking about all of the 53D series. Today's video I wanted to install unofficial memory. I'm going to be doing this on every one of the brand new series from QNAP, the 253D, the 453D and the 653D, the one I happen to have here first. And I'm going to be installing crucial unofficial DDR4 memory. Now why is this a big deal? Well, this device here arrives with a maximum memory um, support of 8 gigabytes. QNAP themselves say no more than 8 gigabytes, and Intel, who produced the CPU, suggests no more than 8 gigabytes. But a number of you utilize this device for surveillance, Plex Media Server, virtual machines, large-scale backup, Apple Time Machine, and more. And all of those applications really do love to consume the memory and eight gig ultimately down the road is actually that much money and a lot of the time a number of you want to go higher than that now this device i have here has got eight gig inside it's got eight gig across two sticks of ddr4 memory of four gig each if i open up the front of the chassis we can open this bad boy up remove some of the hard drives inside. These are the ones we've been using for our guide series of videos. If they're not already live, we'll be with you very, very soon. And if we have a look inside this device, we can see two memory bays there built inside. I can't bring it too far forward because the device is still mains connected in, but you see that L shape there? That is two memory boards inside. So if we remove one of those memory boards, like so, go in there, remove one of them we can see we've got one stick of ddr4 ddr4 uh, one stick of ddr4 4 gig memory and this is 2400 megahertz memory and we can see the brand name of the company there on the front a data and qnet themselves do produce their own memory modules for you to put inside but they don't say that you can't use unofficial memory or what they think of as unofficial memory they're not quite as stringent as Synology on that score and they do allow you to use the DDR4 memory from other brands however they still don't say that you should exceed that sum so in today's video it's going to be twofold rather than make two separate videos like I've done in the past I'm going to make one video and include all the testing so the first thing I'm going to do is install a 16 gigabyte module now I am well aware before you say it that you should really pair modules you should always try to put the same memory matching across both modules but more and more we're seeing NAS brands produce weird quantities of memory and that's something I'm seeing more and more additionally ultimately I don't have two 16 sticks on me today and I don't have two 32 gig sticks on me but mainly what I want to see is is this device going to support this memory module and to make sure that this is safe and fair we're going to remove the other 4 gig module Once we remove both 4 gig DDR4 modules, in theory, if we use just the one stick, we should be absolutely fine. That stick put up a hell of a fight. But there is our second stick, and again, DDR4, so we'll put that with the other. So the first test we're going to run is installing that 16 gig stick on its own. We're going to install this module inside the QNAP NAS. We've already set up the OS on it. We've installed a bunch of apps. We've got the whole device up and running. What we're going to do is see what happens when we boot this device with that single 16 gig module. It's going to install it now. and the modules installed. So now we're getting ready. We're gonna start installing our drive back in. I don't know how well you can make that out, but we have got that stick now installed inside there. We've still got both of those sticks that we've removed over here. And what we're gonna do now is start reintroducing our hard drive media. Now bear in mind, these are 
um, Western Digital Ultra Star Discs. They're quite enterprise grade. So consequently, when I spin this up, it will make a fair bit of clunking and humming during boot. And what we're gonna do is let this thing spin up, then we're gonna let it boot into QTS, and then we're gonna log into it in about five minutes to see if we can see anything from the screen to indicate whether this test has been successful. So let's go ahead and press the power button. We can hear the disc spinning up. We can hear those enterprise drives starting to boot. We've got all of our LED lights flashing here. They're on screen. We've got all of our lights indicating the device is being utilized. And we're getting the device spinning up now. So let's fast forward about five or six minutes and try to load into QTS to see if our NAS is now running. Right, so you can probably hear the NAS still just behind me in the background clunking away with those enterprise class drives, but here we are on the desktop. I'm pleased to say the device booted up in pretty much the same amount of time it did when it had the two times four gigabyte sticks. And if we go into the control panel, we can see that 16 gig usable module right there. I don't think we can find out much more than that. I don't think we can go into too much detail in the background there to see if it can identify the individual slot but I do know that it is that 16 gig module right there and it says there's two memory slots and it is saying sort of a slice but out of 16 so it's not great but as you can see the device has been up and running for 11 minutes since it was powered up so again it took about as much time as I expected it to to reach full boot cycle for us we can see 16 gig of memory available to the system and 13 gig usable the reason it's saying 13 gig usable is because this device is being utilized for lots of my featured series videos i've got lots of applications running here in the background and i do mean all of them running in the background so even if you're not really in them even in idle they're still going to be utilizing a good chunk of memory there and i've got everything from virtual machines to the linux station app to plex media server and more and all of them are kind of slightly in idle but they're still going to take their chunk out of the memory now let's see if we can allocate a lot of these memory and resources let's get the resource monitor open while we do all of this and this should give us a bit more information in real time about what's being utilized as you can see there there's the two and a half gigabytes that we're using and the remaining 15 there if we go into the system resources there we can have a look at the memory and get some more information happening in real time what's being used what's being buffered and what's being pre-allocated. We can even look at the processes there in the background and see how much memory they're all using there in the background. And you can see where all the memory is being allocated to and from. So let's go back to the overview there, bring that down to the bottom of the screen, maybe in a slightly more visible way. And we can have a look at some of the applications that let us allocate memory. So let's go along and go into container station. Now, does container station recognize this memory? Let's have a look. We can see the overall memory there. We can see the 18 uh, marker there of the whole utilization. And it does look like if we create, we can create an application there and we can enter the coding in there or a lot of these will pre-designate their memory. So it's not gonna be able to show too much there. If we go a little further along, go in back into that list, we can have a look at Linux Station. Now, Linux Station should be running there in the background and has already got a pre-designated amount of memory being utilized. So we can't really allocate any more to that. If we go into Virtualization Station, however, this is where we'll be able to see with the sliders just how much memory is duly accessible. So if we go into Creator VM, we're able to see we've got the four cores on that CPU. But as you can see here, the memory, we can drop down, we can go to the gigabytes, and we can assign all of that lovely memory there. Now, obviously we can't assign 16 gig right now because we're partially using a lot of that memory. But let's assign, let's say, let's go for 10 gigabytes of memory to this VM with no disk inside. And remember, because there's no disk, it means we're not going to have this VM running Windows or anything like that. This is going to be just an OS-less computer. We just want to see if the system will allow us to have that setup. So let's uh, give this an area of storage. 
live there doesn't matter how much storage we'll give it we'll give it 250 gig click OK and then oh we still have to name the VM so this is 16 GB test got the description we click OK and now it's going to create that virtual environment for us let's see if the system will allow us to allocate 10 gigabytes of storage to this virtual machine and there is our virtual machine created with 10 gig of pre-allocated memory so let's go ahead and kick off this virtual machine and again bear in mind this virtual machine is not going to be running windows this is going to be looking for a boot disk just like it would if it was a pc without a disk all we wanted to see right now is would it pre-allocate that 10 gig of memory for us there because it does look like it has assigned the 10 gig of memory for us there and overall i'm happy with this so far obviously further testing is going to be required because we are doing something that's against the manufacturer's wishes overall but we do have the 10 gig allocated memory there and that memory is still utilized and accessible in all the other areas of this device even if we go into surveillance applications like surveillance station or q maggie um, uh, qbr pro we would find those memory ratings being listed as they are but what I'm going to do now is shut the device down because what we want to do next is find out will this device see the 32 gigabyte stick. Once we got this device powered down, we're going to install the 32 gig module and we'll find out what we've learned so far. Okay, so our device has powered down. So what we're going to do now is remove the 16 gig module and install our 32 gig module. Now, a few things that we've learned so far. First and foremost, we've learned that the 16 gig module did seem to get seen. We were able to pre-allocate that storage and I will be doing more tests on that. Also, I should have a few more sticks to DDR4 arriving with me very soon. So I'll be able to do dual um, stick testing very, very soon. But another thing I'd like to take away from this is the idea that the memory inside that I've installed inside these, this device so far has been 2,666 megahertz memory. That is the crucial range of DDR4. I don't know how well that's visible on camera because of the light, but that means that this is still faster in frequency than the ones that QNAP are including. They include 2,400 megahertz memory. So we've got a jump there of faster memory as well. Now, I'm under no illusions that the four gig modules of this would work. They definitely would. And as long as you get Sodium DDR4 non-ECC, you should be absolutely fine. But from what I'm seeing so far, I personally would not really have a problem upgrading this device. I've done videos in the past with some other brands when I've installed unofficial memory. The most recent one I did was utilizing the Synology DS220 Plus. When I did upgrade the memory, although the 16 gig worked and the 32 gig didn't, even with the 16 gig, there were graphical inconsistencies within DSM. These are things that I did not see here. It didn't affect the boot time and it didn't affect anything else that was gonna change things moving forward. So what I'm gonna do now is install the 32 gig model. This is a 32 gig DDR4 memory module. Every one of those cells has got two gig of memory inside. And there's, um, I believe, or it might even be four gig on either one of them, I do apologize. Um, but ultimately, we have a huge amount of storage inside there. And what we're gonna do is get this installed inside. And to be perfectly frank, I do not think this is going to work. I think I'm going to install this module and all we're going to see is none of the lights come on and the QTS operating system not function. Let's get that in there. Inside. Fully installed, it's fully clipped in. So now we've installed the 32 gig model. Now again, the 32 gigs about 170 quid shopping around. You can get them in packs of two, obviously, and then you've got 64 gig to play with. We have done testing with this memory module on larger QNAPs, such as the um, 672 and 872 XT and N series, and both of those supported the 32 gig module. But this Celeron-based processor, I have my doubts. And when I press this power button in a moment, 
we are going to find out if this is going to run now you can probably look at the clock below and tell if this is going to work or not because if this video ends in about two minutes then you know it didn't work but if it runs on for longer there might be something else and also if this works i'm definitely going to try installing both memory modules together but in the meantime let's press the power button and find out what happens so we've got the boot sequence we've got the leds We've got the LEDs on screen. We're hearing those enterprise drives spin up. You can probably make that out on the microphone there. Again, enterprise level drives, are, you know, anything above eight to 10 TB, particularly those helium sealed multi-platter drives, the big, big multi-platters. I mean, they're all multi-platter really. They will always make more noise. But what I will say is we do have all of the LEDs on so far, which is a good sign. Now, we will obviously have to wait somewhere between five to 10 minutes for this device to boot up fully, and that's full booting with all the applications to see if we are successful. But we have got all of the LED lights on for all of the drives, and we've got both a system light showing green and a network light showing activity. So. Fingers crossed, we might be onto something here. So what I'm gonna do now is fast forward to the full boot of this device, make my way over to the laptop, and see if this works with our 32 gig DDR4 module. Well, as I kind of suspected, unfortunately we've got no results. The device itself has spun up. I've had this up and running now for about 15 minutes, and try as I might, we're not finding the NAS on the network anymore. Also, on the rear of the device, we've only got the one um, LED coming from the rear LAN port there. There's normally two lights, green and amber, or green and green, depending on the network connectivity of the device. But sadly, we aren't getting any network activity there, and the NAS is not even showing on the router here at the office or the network switch. So, I think we can largely call this test a failure. Uh, we can definitely say that the 32 gig stick is not something we can utilize with this device moving forward, unfortunately. But what I will say is I'm quite pleased with the result on the 16 gig stick. We will be running dual 16 gig modules very, very soon to see if this device supports 32 gig. And unfortunately, it's not here today. I could have held off on this video until I had that, but I thought I'd let you guys know now. And hopefully in the next few days or to a week, we'll do the follow up test with the two 16 gig modules on a QNAP 53D. If you have found this video, do let me uh, found this video helpful. Do let me know in the comments and click like if you liked it. Click subscribe to learn more, and do stay tuned for more videos on how to take advantage of more and more memory in NASes like this. Because of all of the resources that you're ever going to utilize in a NAS, obviously number one is the storage. But after that, memory is one of the most important things for you to take advantage of and look after on your network attached storage device. So let's see how much we can get out of one of these bad boys. I will see you next time.